Yeah, wonderful. Good evening and a very warm welcome to everybody joining our terrestrial university tonight. The terrestrial university is an experimental lecture series accompanying the exhibition critical zones with the idea as the exhibition itself to bring together different voices and practices from the sciences as well as from the arts to discuss and to deepen topics that emerge from the exhibition. And also to, to give all of you at home the possibility to take part in this endeavor. So please join our conversation on Telegram and I will do my very best to channel your thoughts, questions and ideas into our conversation with the help by my wonderful colleague Ada from the communication department. My name is Bettina Korintenberg, and I am co-curator of the exhibition Critical Zones, which was conceived in a larger curatorial team together with Bruno Latour, Peter Weibel, Martin Linard and Daria Miller, as well as many experts from different disciplines and the Critical Zones study group at the University of Arts and Design in Karlsruhe. And today I have the enormous pleasure to welcome the Brazilian artist Barbara Marcel to our conversation. Hello, Barbara. Um, Barbara contributed to the Critical Zones exhibition, the really extraordinary video work, Cine Cipo Cine Liana at Atto, Amazon Tall Tower Observatory, which is a four channel video installation developed in the context of the exhibition produced in collaboration with the ZKN and supported by IMPA, the Amazonian Research Institute, the Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry in Jena, the Seher Fileira Institute, the Goethe Institute São Paulo and Casa Bicho Alter du Chau. And as you already can see from this amazing list of supporters, that is a very interdisciplinary inquiry. And at that point, I need to say that I feel especially connected with this project as I was in conversation with Barbara from the very beginning, the very first ideas when yeah, this project was crossing her path and following the process, how the work then um, took shape. And before we start into the conversation, I would like to briefly introduce Barbara and say a few words about the Sinesipo project for critical zones. Barbara is an artist and filmmaker interested in the cultural roots of nature and the troubled heritage of colonial imagery. She graduated um, in film studies in Rio de Janeiro and holds an MA from the Art and Context Institute at the, the Universität der Künste in Berlin and is currently a PhD candidate at the Bauhaus Universität in Weimar as a research fellow of the Heinrich Böll Foundation. Her PhD project investigates the essay film as a historiographical tool for decolonial ecological thinking with and through images focusing on issues related to the history of botanic between Germany and Latin America. And starting point, of the cinematographic inquiry, Sinesipo Sineliana, is the Atto, the Amazon Tall Tower Observatory in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. It is an international research station in initiated by IMPA, the Amazon Research Institute and the Max Planck Institute. So it is a joint venture um, between Brazil and Germany with the aim to study the interactions between the forest soils and the atmosphere of the region in order to understand the particular and most important role of the Amazon basin for the Earth system. How is the scientific knowledge produced at Atto democratized and communicated to the society? And how does this knowledge specifically impact and dialogue with indigenous, Quilombolas and riverside communities? And in her artistic project, Barbara follows the voices and actions of two local activists and communicators, Natalina Oliveira and Raquel Tupi, as well as scientists at the Atro Tower, initiating an exchange between them and weaving together different ways to read, understand, and interact 
with the Amazon, not only complexifying our idea of life processes in the Amazon beyond set concepts of nature, environment and climate crisis, but also paving new alliances for its defense. And um, now we dive deeply into the details of the project by watching fragments of the videos commented by Barbara. And again, you're all always welcome to pose questions and to communicate your ideas and we will try um, to weave them into our conversation. Dear Barbara, please go ahead. Thank you, Bettina. Um, well, good evening, everybody who's uh, watching us tonight. Um, as Bettina already introduced, um, well, first of all, I've I would like to, to thank uh, all the crew from ZKM, um, especially Bettina, who believed in the project in the first place, uh, for all the exchange that we had um, for a long time. Uh, we, in the beginning, were um, she had like studio visits um, and we were discussing other projects, but uh, the moment I spoke the first time about the, the Ato Tower, it felt like it was the, the right project to, to do and the right moment um, last year. And yeah, I'm deeply grateful for her trust and, uh, and for all the crew of ZKM, also for the installation, because um, actually today was the first time I had the opportunity to see the installation myself here at ZKM. And uh, it's very uh, beautiful um, to see the, the work in the right scale and the four um, screen, uh, screens. And also um, the website uh, project, because you, we have a, a slightly different um, uh, format from the project, uh, so you can you can see in the website um, uh, the exhibition uh, online. Uh, you can see actually a page of the project is divided into six chapters, whereas in the exhibition we have four um, screenings. In total, we have um, um, almost two hour um, material in the installation, and the website a little bit less. Uh, so. We chose for today um, to, sh to show you, as Bettina said, uh, uh, small fragments of each chapter. So we can slowly also activate um, a little bit the um, whoever is watching us now and then start to talk about the, um, the projects. Um, before showing the first extract, I would like to say that, well, the Cine Support um, Cine Layana is part of also of um, a longer research that I started with my PhD at the Bauhaus University. And um, the title refers to um, a, a concept that I have been developing to understand, um, to try to think not only about the forest, the Amazon forest, but also to think, to think with the forest and its inhabitants. So I, I got inspired by the Liana species, which is um, um, growing in between, also growing horizontally in the forest and um, is used to connect and to, as a transport meaning for many species in the forest. And I like very much the idea that it is a species that um, not only connects um, the trees, the leaves, but also the soil and the atmosphere um, in, a, in a kind of a rhizomatic way, let's say. Um, but also you have uh, the liana, it's very present in the Amazon in many forms because um, some species of lianas are used um, as a medicament for, um, for diseases or um, especially by herbalists uh, knowledge. And, and also um, it can be used in the architecture of many houses. So you find the liana 
um, in many ways. And yes, yeah, so that's what I have to say about the the, the title and, and the Cine Cipo Cine Leon. That's why it's, the project is called. It's a kind of an assemblage of thinking um, also the, the way the collage of images and words um, get to, to be um, assembled by the work itself. Um, so I will show now uh, the first extract and then we can follow the conversation. É isso aí, minha gente. Você está ouvindo o nosso papo com ela, Natalina. A mulher, pela madrugada, a saudade dela esse povo tá nisso. Mais integração, 105,9 em caráter experimental, diretamente da sede do distrito, Vila de Boim. Integração, a voz da comunidade da Amazônia brasileira. Cantando pra você, chega ele aí, vem diretamente lá do Vila da Pius. Esse é o hino da nossa unidade, feito por um morador da Resenha, Célio Costa, de lá de São Pedro. digamos assim, não 100% nosso ainda. Né? Por ser unidade coletiva, o governo pode muito bem dizer assim, olha, acabou o Resex hoje, a gente pode dormir e amanhã acordar com a notícia de que não somos mais uma unidade de conservação, né? como a Floresta Nacional do Tapajós, está dentro das 63, né? e, é, é, enumeradas pelo governo, a ser cortada pela metade. Né? Um, okay, so um, going back to so what we saw now in the first uh, in this first extract. Um, um, we have the presentation of Natalina. Uh, Natalina de Oliveira is one of the main characters in the project. Um, and she, she is part of a um, community. Um, she lives in the Tapajós, um, Arapiuns of Tapajós um, extractivist reserve in the Amazon. Um, so when, I, when I, we first thought about the project and I had the desire to go to the Ato Tower, um, uh, to do the, the, the video and to understand how the scientists work uh, in the Amazon um, for this tower that observes the, the climate. Um, I quickly realized that actually as a Brazilian living in Germany, the tower was um, very much accessible to me or it was closer even to me than to some people who are living 
very close to it. And this, uh, this uh, thought also um, brought me some um, kind of responsibility. Um, then because I thought I cannot go um, inside of the tower myself with my camera and do my videos, which I normally do, um, just carrying my camera around and um, as some kind of extension of my body and, and observing and or do, trying to do some essay film about the scientific work done, done in the, at Atto Tower. So instead of that, I, I chose to enter the tower together with other people. And it was very important to me to connect with people that I already had some um, network developed through these years that I have been working in the Amazon since 2015. I have done a few films before that. Uh, so in, within this year, I kind of cultivated some relationships with uh, people. And one of the things that struck me the most um, since the beginning, since my first travel there um, in 2015 was the role of the community radios. And as a very powerful tool for um, communication and also a tool for informing the, the, the people, uh, informing um, not only culturally, um, but informing the, the people from the territories um, about their rights and um, also to connect them in a very special way. So, I see the, um, the community radios as a powerful um, militant tool, I would call um, also. It's very engaging uh, within the communities and also very, very creative. So they have like this is very specific way of communicating that is uh, very peculiar from the north of Brazil. And I say that because I come from the south. So we, we uh, in the south, I, th I guess we, we have very less, um, we're not, this kind of um, community uh, radio productions, they don't come so often to the South. No? Um, so what I thought about the, the tower also, which uh, would be interesting, uh, it's not only to go there and observe what is going on in the tower, the scientific uh, part of it, but also to propose a temporary um, shift of, of, of the role of this tower within the help, uh, with the help of uh, uh, Natalina and, and Tupi. So I proposed to them and um, they were very enthusiastic about traveling there. They live in the state of Tapajós, uh, of uh, Pará. So this extractivist reserve is actually um, in, in another state, uh, Ato Towers uh, is at, uh, um, it's located in the Amazonas um, state. So the project also had this kind of a trajectory that we, ha we had to do together. And within this time, we also got to know each other better and it was very important for the exchange and uh, the time we, we spent together. But so the project begins in Village Buin, which is one of the, um, the, the, one of the first uh, villages um, colonized or um, the, uh, the first uh, missions of Jesuits, uh, the, of the Catholic Church uh, from Portugal in the Amazon in the 17th century. And so together with Santarém, Buin um, and other villages, uh, you have um, this uh, first uh, period of co colonization and the presence, very strong presence of the, the church, the Catholic church, um, uh, trying to convert um, the indigenous people that used to live there, which is um, the Tupinamba people. So Natalina actually um, is a radio communicator and I have to say she doesn't identify herself as indigenous, but um, as kabokla, which means um, the people who are um, um, either 
miscegenated uh, from the ancestrality of indigenous together with Europeans and um, Brazilians that came afterwards uh, to the region of Amazon. And yeah, so um, the project starts with her and village Boim because they have a very special radio. And so in the scene that we just saw now, we, we watched um, also this kind of a, a, a music that they produce together, um, talking about this extractivist reserve, that it's something very special also because it's a conservation unit um, uh, in, the, in the area of the Brazilian Amazon. But it's, con it's this conservation units also allow people um, to live inside of it. So you have, it's different from uh, other conservation units. Uh, and, and this was an achievement of social movements in Brazil from um, the 80s, uh, beginning of 90s. So you have the first um, extractivist reserves in the 90s. And it's curious because we, in English um, language, the extractivist, the word is extractivism, is very much connected to a pejorative uh, term. Um, and it's mostly thought um, in connection to mining or, or extensive uh, extractivism. But in this case of the Amazonian extractivist reserves is very, um, it, it's another history. It's connected to social movements, achievement of um, the right to the land. And so we have many figures important um, within the history of the extractivist reserve. We, we don't have the time to talk about too much about that, but maybe uh, if you have more questions in the end, I can go further. I just wanted to, to name one of the, the main leaders um, in Brazil related to this uh, achievement was uh, Chico Mendes, an um, environmentalist that was murdered um, in the 80s. And yeah, as Natalina also mentioned uh, in the radio, those um, conservation units, um, they are also threatened by the, the current government. Uh, so the people, they don't own the land, but they, they own the right to have their li live livelihoods and to to live in a common and sustainable way and just extract just um, in, a, in a control um, in a very small scale of uh, familiar ag agriculture and so they are like a great model of uh, how to live with the forest and not so much in a domination um, relation or in a consumerist uh, relation that normally you have um, in, in plantation monocultures and, and yeah. So let's go to the second extract and then I continue presenting um, now Milena Hakel Tupi. Yeah, and maybe just um, because it was so interesting what, what you were referring to, there mm -hmm. already popped up really key concepts also of the Critical Zones exhibition. And I just wanted to briefly mention that, that the idea of um, forms of finding forms to build up communities in a shared action or, and also the, the idea of um, communication is very important to the exhibition. And those two together to create um, yeah, a potential for an activate, yeah, an activation, what uh, Bruno Latour calls toward the terrestrial, which means um, a different kind of getting a different kind of mood of relation um, from ourselves to our live our living environment. We are deeply entangled to, and what I found super interesting also in this first fragment we just saw are uh, those really strong lyrics from the song we were um, hearing and. Um, I think it is a um, Celio Costa uh, living there in the in the reserve, and I found especially interesting the connection between this um, unity they gain through for what they are fighting or struggling or for the the rights and also the the health of the Amazon region, which is their territory they live from and. Um, there's a very Latourian idea already in this kind of thought that 
publics are created through shared matters of concern. And I think this is very paradigmatic what we see here already. And we have already a very moving questions from, uh, question from our audience, which is also pointing towards this um, community building and activation, because the first question is indeed, what can we do to support the project, um, Barbara, your project or our project? So maybe we can come back to this very moving question more at the end of our talk. But I think to keep in mind those key concepts of um, yeah, community building, a change in com communication and sharing knowledge and information and different um, yeah, also approaches to the realities we live in um, together with an activation is really a core of paradigms we are moving around. Yes, um, just to then to connect to what, uh, to what you were saying, Bettina, um, I also forgot to mention that um, when I say that the extractivist reserve, uh, such as the Tapajoas um, um it, it was um, something that was gained from the social movements. Um, um, it's very important to, and to say that um, it was also a, a very important alliance building uh, between indigenous people, um, between the Caboclos and between the Quilombolas. So the Quilombolas um, are the communities also very present in the Amazon. And they come, they have a very uh, long history uh, in Brazil of uh, communities they, that also use the forest um, um, since um, the time of um, Africans uh, were enslaved and um, by the Portuguese. Um, so it was communities that uh, formed by um, um, escaped um, and enslaved people um, from African origins. And uh, you have start, the most famous one is uh, the, uh, the Quilombo dos Palmares. Um, but you have also many Quilombos um, in the Amazon. So when we were, when we met Tupi and um, her community was also mentioned that it was a very important moment in the nineties when all those um, villages um, formed um, a kind of, um, um, yeah, they had they they saw that they had to to make this alliance together in order to demarcate the the right to the land. So you have like many. Uh, it's very complex um, when we think about the Amazon. Um, normally, um, the Amazon is also portrayed uh, still today. As a, as a territory with not so many people, and um, even by the Brazilian state, and we have Natalina saying this in the video installation as well, when she's um, in Santarém in a conference from community, um, many Riverside communities uh, representatives, and they are talking about the energy and the fact that many of those communities don't have um, light, they don't have electricity yet, they have, um, they use, uh, they have to use generator, generator um, in gasoline and they have to buy themselves. So that's also an issue about, uh, yeah, very precarious use of um, the energy there, even for the community rages um, also. But yeah, going back to the, the complexity of um, the people and diversity of people you can find in the Amazon, let's go to the, the second extract. Um, and we continue to present Raquel Tupi. Tá, vou assentado no tronco 
da Jurema. Pra que mandou me chamar o Juremê, o Juremá? Pra que mandou me chamar? Agora dá certo que ela assim. Tava na beira do rio sem poder ah, atravessar. Chamei pelo caboclo, caboclo Tupinambá. Porque de lá pra lá o sol tá mais pra ali Era melhor fazer do outro lado, né? Por causa que aquela faixa Ela tá muito Ela, ela não, não, não Deu contra ela não deu contraste bom. Aí tem que fazer do outro lado. So we just saw now um, Milena Raquel Tupinambá, um, who lives in Aldeia San Francisco and identify herself as uh, indigenous from the Tupinambá people. And so we, what we saw now um, was um, an event that um, the Tupinambá people, um, especially Raquel Tupi, so we see a lot of her protagonism. So to say, you know, organizing the, this day, it was like a three day event of um, gathering at Pau da Letra, which is the shorter, um, um, short, shorter part of the Tapajós River, um, where you can see many of the ferries um, coming, uh, this uh, very big boats, uh, full of um, wood or um, minerals um, um, or soybeans um, being transported. Um, and what they were trying to do um, to pee together with her collective, um, the collective of Etnomedia Tupinamba, they call, um, they were trying to um, close this, this part of the river in order to not allow the, the boats to, to pass through. And we, with the crew of the, the, the project, we, we also helped with our small boat. And um, so we see the, 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 also the importance of the, um, producing this image when they, they are trying to, to go inside the, um, one of the boats that is carrying um, uh, soybeans. An individual we see the negotiation also from um, the Pajé of the Aldeia, so one of the leaders of this, uh, uh, the Aldeia Tupinamba, and Tupi, they are talking about the best angle to make the picture, the photography. So uh, how to produce this image of uh, the temporary going up um, in this, um, the, the boats. And so Raquel is uh, working as a media activist together with other people from her, her village. She lives, she lives also in Santarém. And um, together with uh, Natalina, she came then with us to, to this trajectory of um, going up to the Auto, Auto Tower and transforming the Auto Tower into a temporary community radio. So I, I guess we can go now to the to the, the third extract where we begin to see um, the scientists working at Atul. Sí, 
si no puedo alcanzar. De hecho, de esa es... Ah, sí, ya guardo las folias de esta. De cuatro. ¿Ese cuatro? Eh. Cuatro ya. Ya. Olha só aqui. Ah, Quero cortar já. E esse é muito frio. A oito, tá tudo. A oito, tá tudo aí perto. Nove. Acabou. Não sei que tá bom. Sei que tem as pontas. Tá podre? Uhum. Vamos tirar outro? É. Quem é que corta onde? Corta aqui. Aqui. A minha estava ao contrário, não sei o que. Hum? A minha estava ao contrário. Entrando ar por algum lugar. Cero punto ciento y treinta y seis.
So in this extract, we see um, two scientists, uh, part of INPA, the Institute for Amazonian Research in, in Brazil, uh, Lorena and uh, Aurelia. And um, they are, um, I chose this part because then we see, well, we don't see the tower yet, but we see as um, how the, the actually the auto tower is a bigger project, not only about the tower and the observation of the um, atmosphere, but also it's a re reserve of uh, scientific um, researches, um, several kinds of it, and, and also like enables many uh, scientific uh, groups to work because of its infrastructure. And the project is already a kind of a Babel tower, let's say the tower, it's because you can find many scientists of all over the world, not only Brazil and Germany. So you, you have, for instance, even uh, at, at some point, Tupi is also talking to, to Angela, who is the cooker of the, um, of, um, the base there. And they are talking about how you can hear many languages, such as Japanese and uh, <laughs> many um, languages from uh, abroad. Uh, so we, uh, I selected this uh, specific um, extract to show the, the scientists because I, um, for me, it's what, um, well, I'm, I'm shooting myself there with my camera. And I, I think there is a meta-linguistic um, <laughs> point of the images because I am um, at the same time, at, they are a scientist's um, um, observing and measuring um, this vulnerability rate of uh, the plants. Um, I'm also like observing them making the observation of nature or what we call can be called nature in this case. But, um, and I feel like that uh, it's a moment that um, it's very clear this symbi symbiosis of um, the bodies and the instruments of uh, scientific um, research. And um, so as their bodies extend into this instrument uh, of uh, the measurements of the plants in a very live uh, way. And I felt very much connected at the moment that I was shooting, very much present and with my camera as my instrument as well connected like extension as an extension of my body as well. So I felt that was um, a good moment to share. We can go to the fourth. Um... Yeah, and maybe just um, what I found very striking because this is also something we discuss a lot in, in the context of the exhibition is um, the notion of care is so present in this um, excerpt we just saw. And for me, it's always, when I saw it, what was so striking how um, the two female scientists with, with um, yeah, how much care speaks from their gestures and also how they um, speak about the plants. They really are kind of commenting on the states of the plants in a very worried way almost as if the plants would be humans. And also the scenery in this um, very bricolage laboratory, which we saw in the end, it very much um, reminds uh, some words Bruno Latour um, pronounced for our first uh, section in the exhibition, which is starting to observe. And I just wanted to very briefly quote to bring him his voice also in, into the evening. When a sick person enters an intensive care unit, the first thing caregivers do is to apply multiple instruments to get a good reading of the main variables that will help physicians to monitor the patient's condition. In the same way, it is necessary to devise critical zone observatories for the earth to monitor all of the different parts that compose the fragile and complex domain of the critical zone. So I think that was very present in, in the fragment we saw and what informs the overall exhibition. And that was also the reason why your project is so 
crucial or so to the point of um, what we were addressing, this kind of getting into a new mode of sensitivity to understand, um, yeah, to get another and a deeper understanding for the territory we are living. And there is one question from the audience, maybe we can address that as well. Yeah. There's um, a question from Lena, she writes, Muito obrigada, Barbara. <laughs> I love your introduction. Is Atu and your project around it also the radio transmissions known in Northeast Recife, Salvador, and even the South, Rio uh, Til Sao Paulo, or did it only circulate around the era um, due to proximity of the radio airwaves? So I think she addresses a bit the, yeah, the radios. Mm. Yeah, that's also, um, yeah, thank you for the question, Lena. Um, that's what I meant um, in the beginning when, um, uh, when I was talking about uh, the fact that those uh, very rich um, um, forms of discourse that are deeply connected and rooted also by the oral history, uh, the, the oral technique of um, storytelling uh, in the Amazon area. Unfortunately, they, they stay very much in the within the territory. They don't um, um, they don't come out of it um, so often. Um, of course, now with the with the internet and podcasts, um, this is uh, changing a little bit. So you have a, a few uh, podcasts uh, um, produced by indigenous people also, and in Brazil coming. Um, especially indigenous people uh, also living in the south of Brazil. Um, but those from the community radios that, um, as, such as Village Boing, for instance, they only transmit uh, in, a, in, a, in a territory. Um, they, they exchange a lot between themselves and the Amazon, but it comes very rarely to, um, to the south. Should I go to the to the fourth one, Bettina, and then we see the, the interaction. Yes. Okay. O que eu pergunto? Tem essas marcas aqui, ó. Essa a gente passou um, um bocado já. Geralmente elas estão voltadas para o caminho, né? Para a gente poder é bater e logo ver. Estou tão já acostumado com o número dela que eu uma delas pelo, pelo número. número. Ah, vamos lá na 80, não mais sei o que. É, fica meio sem identidade, né? Parece que é só um número. Não, né? mas é a linguagem da... Aqui. No, no estudo de vocês, né? Na pesquisa. Então tá aqui a torre. A gente tá mais ou menos na 73. 73 aqui, ó. Nesse ponto aqui, ó. Entendi. Ó, oh, 64. Aqui tem 166, aqui tem 165 e aqui tem 68. Nossa, 69 deve estar aqui, tá aqui não acredito. Acho que o tal ali tá logo depois dessa curva aqui. Tá bem. Aí é uma doida. Não, pois é. Eu não tô falando do dado. Testar de GPS? Se bem. Achei! Aqui, pessoal! Venga! Uh, tava mais fácil do que ah, eu imaginava. Eu sabia que tava perto, mas não tão perto. Aqui. Uhum. Mas essa árvore ela é uma árvore, uma árvore sagrada para pessoas que têm a o respeito pela cura tradicional, né? Para mim isso aqui ele é muito sagrado assim, né? Uhum. Não é qualquer pessoa que usa isso. Exatamente. Ele é tauari, quando você faz o cigarro, ele é chamado de taquara. Taquara. Nossa, fica isso. bem mesmo, papelinho uhum. mesmo. O pajé, ele é uma referência na cura, digamos assim, pode ser uma infecção intestinal, coisa e tal, né? Eu uso então também para um remédio, para um específico, papelinho? Sim, defumar, para defumar, tipo, acontece, a criança se afogou, tá espantado, algo espantou, uhum. esse médico não vai curar. Aí leva lá no pajé e o pajé vai defumar. Se você passa fumaça na coroa, 
que a gente, isso aqui da gente, e ela não segurar, significa que nada tá bem contigo, entendeu? E se tu defuma e aquela fumaça fica, ela dá uma girada assim. Entendi. Então você defuma e puxa né, pra frente. Daqui a pouco faz de novo, até a coroa ficar perfeita. Legal. Não, não, não tinha ideia disso, sabia? E a questão do Tawari também, pros caçadores, se vai pra mata fechada, é obrigatório levar o cigarro pronto em oferecimento ao rei da mata para você ter uma boa caçada, para você ter proteção. É, tem pessoas que dizem que quando não leva, acaba se perdendo na mata, é né? Aí, pô, mas caça. eu giro realmente no mesmo lugar e, e volto e volto e volto. Que a gente fala do pedir, pedir licença. licença. Quando a gente vai no rio, a gente pede licença. Quando a gente vai na mata, a gente pede licença. Quando a gente vai apanhar uma folha para fazer um banho, a gente pede licença. A gente pede, porque tudo tem o seu dono. Seu dono, a sua dona, os seus espíritos, seus guardiões ou suas guardiãs. A nossa tradição, as nossas crenças, né, que isso é uma religião também, né, a nossa espiritualidade, a nossa relação com a mata, tem toda uma ciência. A palavra da ciência é da mata. É, chega, conversa, vai... Ouve e sente. So in this um, in this part of the, the video, which uh, corresponds in the installation of, uh, uh, to the third screening um, it's about the interactions that came out um, of this um, our visit in the Arto Tower together with Natalina and Tupi. So through Natalina and Tupi um, we, we discover what the scientists um, are researching and here we see we, uh, we just saw um, a conversation between David um, uh, who is uh, also a scientist working for um, IMPA and uh, he's researching this specific tree, uh, the Tawari, who actually it's, as Tupi says, and, and also Natalina says, it's a very important tree um, for um, the local people in the Amazon, both indigenous and non-indigenous people. Um, they they have uh, as, a, as a sacred uh, tree and um, for, many uses, uh, one of them, um, the, the cigarette that uh, she showed, uh, to be shows, um, but it's very interesting to see how this different languages um, on art and different knowledges about the same um, plant um, are put together um, in the scene. So, you have uh, also the, the, the very distinct way of observing um, so-called nature <laughs> um, by uh, when, when you see that um, David is showing this, um, the iPad and the data that he produced from the canopy um, um, instruments that are in the forest to, to follow the tree, uh, how the tree produced its leaves and when it's, uh, well, with specific um, um, research that he, he does. And then in comparison to how Tupi observes the, 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 um, the Tawari, um, it's very interesting, this kind of uh, conversations uh, that came out of the project uh, because we, we were there with them. And they are sharing um, both um, forms of knowledge with us. Do you want to comment or um, say anything, Bettina, or should I go to the fifth? Uh, um, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I just, I, I like very much also this excerpt where you see very much this knowledge is in relation or what you already mentioned and how differently a pluriverse of narrations and approaches um, that are applied or inform the different relations to the Amazon and I found very interesting to have this 
data and machine led um, information that the scientists uh, gain from the Amazon. And then I, I very much like also the last um, comment by Tupi, who's just saying that there's a forest science. She, she also calls it science behind their approach that is to arrive at the forest, to talk, to move, to listen, and to feel. And that reminded me a lot also um, of uh, Anna Tsing's The Art of Noticing. So, so I found it just very interesting to think about this um, multiplication of sensors, not only the, the scientific sensors, but also our senses and our sensitivity to resharpen or regain that again. And I think that gets quite clear in this um, beautiful passage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we go to the fifth one and finally see the tower now. I think something is wrong with the computer thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe we, we stick uh, a moment with um, uh, also what we have seen um, just right now, and I just check if there are some questions from the audience, but I think no. Um, what, what I find also kind of striking is this um, non-hierarchical exchange of, of knowledge we just have seen. I mean, the, the coming together of the scientists and the uh, local communicators for me, it's also, um, yeah, for that a very interesting moment that you really see that they kind of learn from each other and have a very, um, yeah, interested uh, attitude towards each other. I don't know, Barbara, how did you um, uh, experience the exchange between the scientists and uh, Natalina and Tupi? Um. I think, can you hear me? Stuart? Yeah. Okay, because we're having some technical mm -hmm. issue with the video. Yeah. Um, but maybe you can tell a bit because I think that's a super interesting point. How was, for example, the first encounter between the Natalina Tupi and the scientists? Maybe you can, can mm -hmm. tell us a bit about like the first encounter and then how that um, was going on and how the relation was built up. Sure, yes. Um, so we had um, what we we, uh, we had um, two weeks time uh, inside the auto tower. It's a very specific, so it's a very hard place to get um, into. Uh, you have to travel many hours from Manaus. So as I was saying, we we came all the way from Para to um, to the Amazonas uh, state, which is a quite a long journey of three days boat journey <laughs> together. And when, when we finally, um, I think when we finally enter the Watuman reserve, there were obviously a lot of expectation from all of us, um, the crew. Um, so for instance, I was uh, shooting together with Filipe Froza, um, the, the cinematographer of the project and Ani Santos, the, who was doing who was doing the sound, a very small crew, but um, and also the producer Bruna Bichara. And uh, so I guess for all of us, we had like this, this we built <laughs> this expectation very high, like uh, the, during the whole period of time that we were traveling together. Uh, from Boeing and then Aldea San Francisco and, and Reserva do Atuma. So when we finally saw the tower, it was very, um, well, first of all, the tower itself is very striking. It's like 325 meters high. Um, 
and there was a, a big expectation of uh, like how uh, are we going to 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 go up? Can we with all the equipments and um, and then the scientist meeting? I, I guess uh, it was a very important moment um, when we we came inside. Um, in the first day, we proposed to the scientists that were working at the same time as we were there because they are always changing. They are always like the, the places you have entrance um, two days a week and also people leaving two days a week. So there were a lot of people coming and going. And the first day we proposed uh, at the dinner time, the dinner table, because people always meet at the dinner table there at the Watamon Reserve. We propose a, a presentation um, circle mm -hmm. and we introduce ourselves, uh, everybody, a bit of the background, who we are, what we are doing there. This is not a, a, a project of, um, for, for the TV that usually takes like one or two days inside, inside the tower, but we are actually going to spend some time here. We would like to know what you are doing. And, and, and so on. So I think this, the, the matter of time is also very important for creating this um, um, trust um, between not only Natalina and Tupi and us, but also between the scientists and us, mm -hmm. so that we don't create a relationship of only like, yes, uh, uh, very quickly, please uh, tell me what to do. It was uh, after a while that uh, we got to know each other um, and then people were um, accepting or not that we follow them uh, in the field work. Yeah, and, that's really interesting. And um, do you know if uh, Natalina and Tupi stayed in touch or are staying in touch with the scientific community? So, so maybe Barbara, you can briefly maybe just um, tell us if they are yeah, kind of in, in touch or still uh, being in communication with the scientists they met. Um, yeah, one of the, the important moments was when we visited um, together with Olaf, um, one of the scientists from the Max Planck Institute of Biogeochemistry from Jena. Mm -hmm. And um, we visited one of the communities just next to the tower and together with Natalina and Tupi. Um, so we see this moment um, of dialogue um, with the community of Macacaboya, also in the installation. And um, there, some very important um, talks took place, not only between Olaf and the community, but also between Natalina and Tupi and the community. So first, Natalina and Tupi were speaking about um, the difference between the, um, this uh, RDS, which is another kind of uh, conservation unit um, in the Amazon, um, uh, related to the Macacaboya specifically, this community next to the tower. And, and they were talking about the different histories of um, uh, uh, organization of those communities and how they would um, need to have a more centralized, uh, let's say, um, form of um, organization. Uh, and then there was also the talk with Olaf that was very interesting because the community got to know a bit more um, about the, the tower itself and, and, and basically um, the scientific, uh, uh, what the scientific community is producing there. So the, one of the main questions of the community was, what does this tower brings to our community? And Olaf just answered the question um, saying that, well, it's, it's very hard for a scientist to, to answer that very <laughs> uh, directly because we are producing data in, in a very big scale um, of time. And, and maybe you only see the, the results of um, the, this knowledge production in, in a few years. Um, but basically we have uh, some common um, 
äh, Ziel, so kann man ob, äh, äh, aims äh, or aims. Yes, thank you. <lacht> Some common aims, um, uh, which is to, to protect the biodiversity of the forest. And so what I have been um, exchanging with Natalina and to peace, like uh, since that project, um, and they also got uh, very surprised and we see this in many uh, discussions they had with the scientists, for instance, with Clement, um, Charles Clement, um, who is um, an ecologist working, uh, he's former US uh, American, uh, but living in the Amazon for more than 30 years. And um, he's, um, yeah, working on the genetic of crops to prove the, the, the presence of uh, human beings in the Amazon for a very long time and actually proving the domestication of the forest by um, um, the time of the Holocene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, Homo sapiens uh, and, and also further on with indigenous people. Um, uh, some, it, it's a very important piece is the, what he's proving there. So like this kind of encounters were very rich and we can follow them in, the, in this interaction um, channel of the installation and, and the website, or the conversations. Uh, I think the important thing was also that um, we see that sometimes um, the different knowledges, um, they bring some... Um, uh, something new from this conversa conversation. Uh, so it's not only that one is um, uh, informing the other. So it's not that the scientists are informing what they do in the forest. There, there is a, a true um, exchange, let's say, I, I, from from what uh, happened in these encounters. And um, I, I'm not so sure how is the relationship right now. But um, regarding the Atta Tower and uh, scientific community, for instance, and the, the communities um, just next to, to the tower. But there is, um, I, I mean, I know there are many of the scientists uh, working themselves to, to keep connected with the, those communities. And, um, and also um, Natalina and Tupi are very uh, curious uh, themselves to, to keep engaging with the scientists they met. Um, but also on the other hand, Tupi herself is also studying um, at the University of um, West of Pará. Uh, so she's actually becoming a scientist herself, not natural scientist, but social scientist. And um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, as you might have uh, also noticed already, we are having a little uh, technical trouble, but um, we will show the last uh, fragment shortly. And uh, while we um, set that up newly, I, I just wanted um, to share with uh, you something that uh, I found very striking about what we have seen so far. Um, is something that is also very important for the exhibition itself, um, is the idea of self-description um, that, or one of the basic uh, core questions of the exhibition, also when you come into the exhibition, is um, getting into a mode of more of self-awareness and self-description towards what sustains you, what um, uh, yeah, allows you to exist and um, all the networks around you, you're entangled so deeply with um, the life territory you're living in. And um, what I found so striking or a, a very crucial question in the exhibition is that there's a big disconnect between, um, yeah, what we know, what we are living from, or the place we are living, and we, we don't really recognize or know what we are living off. And I think in the protests of the Amazon community people, which we just saw there, this disconnect is um, kind of, uh, yeah, resolved or very clear that they know very clearly 
what they depend on and which territory they need to defend. And that is something we would like to trigger in the exhibition and also with the discussions around to shape or reshape the awareness um, yeah, uh, on what we depend on. And again, I would like to quote briefly uh, Bruno Latour in, it's also an introductory text to one of our um, section, which is called We Don't Live Where We Are, Goes Acreages. Um, quote, taking care of the land we live on would be fairly easy if we knew which land we live on. The problem is that we have no clear understanding of the soil that produces the resources out of which we gain our prosperity. There's no correspondence between the border of our country and the real borders of the places that let us thrive. Not only because we have no clear view of how the critical zone actually works, but also because there's a disconnection between the two definitions of borders of our lands. And um, that I found very, very striking in, in, in the lyrics of the songs and the engagement and energy that is transmitted through the community radio and also through the protests of um, the boats that we just saw that the um, indigenous communities living in the Amazon, they are super clear about um, the, their territory. They can describe their territory. They have a, a, a very big emotional and um, yeah, direct connection to what they uh, depend on. And so they now know how to defend it or how to protest for it or how to fight for it. And um, I think that is something that we can all kind of take from, from also what we saw um, there that this political activation really uh, depends a lot on our um, yeah, sensitivity on our awareness, what we need to defend to live. And it seems that at least, I mean, the, the problematic also of the term we is quite obvious, which I'm also using right now. I'm, I'm speaking from my position right now, the, the we from, let's say, the, the industrialized um, Western societies, um, that this, this, this connect, we kind of, also Bruno Latour always talks about that we kind of need to reconnect the two um, maps or the two territories again, the territory of our nation state, state um, in which we have our rights to vote and our rights, um, yeah, our human rights, and native rights, and um, yeah, the territory we also describe from the territory our resources come from, the, the, which is also, of course, a very colonial um, question or a question that is informed by our colonial history, the long history of resource extraction and a wealth that then is uh, gained from the resources that were extracted also from the labor and the production from uh, so-called ghost territories, ghost um, acreages, which is a, a term coined by the historian um, Kenneth Pomerantz. And um, yeah, I hope Barbara's back now. <laughs> I can hear you, but I'm not sure if everybody can hear you. Uh, we, we need to <laughs> wait for our, uh, for Moritz, who's our uh, video administrator. So there was a little bit of trouble, which I, I tried to uh, fill up with um, informing you a bit um, around uh, all the topics that kind of um, touch uh, the, the um, project we just saw. And I just see there is another question or a comment from the, our uh, lovely Telegram group. Um, is your work uh, represented somewhere outside the context of contemporary art museums? 
And thank you all for your great work. I admire the collaborative mode of operations intention and taking part in shaping the future and thus taking responsibility through art. And yeah, I think that is a beautiful question also uh, of kind of a final question that we uh, can then in the end address. For us also, um, maybe I can uh, uh, hear better answer from the perspective um, of uh, the curatorial part. Um, for us, um, art here has a very... Had a, art had a very important um, uh, role in, in huh? art is kind of uh, the sensitivity Art, um, and we, also we will make it. Um, what do we have and external hard drive? Uh, translate oh. something that in a very different um, way than uh, to the public. Oh. And I think what is that, more that, that is the uh, project Navarra yeah. is that he was yeah. able to bring totally different communities together mm. that would have never been in touch without her. Um, enthusiasm and her work and her ability yeah. also to create um, yeah, um, a framework uh, um, and a space um, <laughs> for, for um, people uh, to meet and exchange. Uh, and this is exactly yeah. what we need. Ah. We need more such um, spaces and platforms. And museums, of course, have, uh, I have my a great responsibility in. Maybe. Um, this can context join the discussion. discussion to set up platforms um, like that GM now tries or does, where um, people from different disciplines that uh, otherwise would not meet can meet, can exchange, and therefore then also uh, get active again or create what we were um, before mentioning those. Um, uh, yeah, communities of shared matters or shared concerns, which is really a basis for uh, getting an activation. And I think what is pretty interesting is that all the the knowledge or <clears throat> the uh, which is gained from the data in the Ado Tower then really strengthens also um, all the the fights or the struggles from the indigenous communities. The, the knowledge um, that the Amazon rainforest is really in danger, that a lot of trees are dry, uh, drying out and dying, that a lot of the biodiversity is already lost. And um, the scientific proof, of course, makes even stronger their fight also for their territories and their way um, of life. And um, so this kind of bridging communities and also um, looking at discourses from different angles and, and to set up a kind of pluriverse is most important. And I think now <laughs> we, we are in the very lucky position that we can see the very final and um, yeah, the, the last chapter, the ascent of the two in, uh, local activists with the scientists to the top of the tower and have uh, yeah, our um, uh, yeah, the most important moment of the broadcast <laughs> from the Atto Tower. And here, I'm very happy to give the word again to Barbara. <laughs> to I'm sorry, you. Bettina, yes. <laughs> now we are back and we are finally seeing the tower, hopefully. Um, let me play for you the last extract then. Yes. So, yay! Enfim, a floresta está comemorando nosso estúdio. Chegamos para instalar nossa rádio comunitária. Comunicação popular em defesa e proteção dos nossos territórios, comunidades e povos. Olha, rapaz, eu vou de amarrar. 
Na Torre Ato são 15 horas e 40 minutos. Olá você, boa tarde. Estamos no ar a 325 metros com a nossa rádio Florestária VV, diretamente em conexão com a Rádio Comunitária Santana de Óbidos. Um abraço aí para a nossa coordenadora, a dona Selma, que está acompanhando a nossa programação. Vamos lá, no teste. Tá. Programa. Está ouvindo perfeitamente? Sim, está ótimo. Eu estou ouvindo, nós estamos ao vivo aqui direto da Torre Ato para a transmissão de mais um programa comunitário diretamente para a Rádio Santana de Óbidos FM, aí nos estúdios na apresentação de Dona Selma Siqueira. Olá, boa tarde. Está começando o programa na sua rádio comunitária Santana de Óbidos. Como é que está a experiência aí na Torre? Muito louca, dona Thelma. Loucura! Você conseguiu nessa subir torre nessa aqui, torre? Muita adrenalina. Meu Deus, Olha, imagina. conseguimos subir a torre. E dá pra gente observar do alto aqui, 325 metros de altura, o verde da floresta, né? Que essa torre, ela trabalha com vários cientistas em várias áreas para observação do clima, para entender, para saber o quanto a floresta é importante para nós, para a vida humana na Terra. És corajosa. Sim, com certeza. Vamos transmitir para toda a Amazônia aí, nosso programa de rádio. E temos aí a Santana FM. Um abraço carinhoso para todos os nossos ouvintes, acompanhando a programação. Ok, we just saw now, actually, the first extract of the tower part. I will put just the, the next one, which is the dialogue with uh, Natalina and uh, Tupi talking to Flavia about the tower. Mm. No, I can't. Um, well, what we saw in this, um, in the meanwhile, I can, I can, so do you see the video now? Yeah, I think so. It just um, maybe click to play and then, okay. yeah. O seu papel aqui no IMPA? Então, eu sou uma pesquisadora pós-doc aqui no IMPA. Eu estou vinculada a um laboratório de ciclos biogeoquímicos, que é um grupo de pesquisa que, entre várias perguntas, a gente tenta entender melhor que é o efeito das mudanças climáticas nas florestas tropicais. E essas mudanças climáticas que você tem pesquisado é, no cenário atual, qual seria? A gente fala de mudanças climáticas, a gente está tá falando de mudanças em alguns parâmetros, por exemplo, na quantidade, na emissão de gás carbônico, é, no aumento da temperatura, que também está correlacionado com o dióxido de carbono, e, na verdade, na emissão de outros gases estufas que são podem ser nocivos para os seres vivos é, em altas concentrações. né? A Amazônia, o bioma amazônico, ele é o maior ecossistema tropical que a gente tem no mundo. A gente não está sendo intoxicado por dióxido de carbono porque as florestas tropicais, elas são responsáveis pelo, pelo por, por ainda existir um balanço quase zero de carbono no mundo inteiro. A gente tem uma crise muito grande no Brasil que é a falta de reconhecimento da ciência. Né? Então a gente está passando por uma crise econômica e o que acontece na crise econômica é que os, governa os governantes falam vamos cortar a ciência, vamos cortar a educação, isso não é prioridade. Né? Então isso é reflexo também da nossa falta de habilidade para convencer a população e a sociedade de que ciência é importante. Né? E aí eu acho que essa última crise que a gente está passando agora está mostrando ela veio também para poder, para a gente se olhar e a gente refletir a respeito disso, né? A gente tem que parar de falar ciência para o próprio umbigo, essa que é a questão, e saber comunicar. Cada vez mais a comunidade científica está se dando conta. Né? Opa, pera aí, por que, que eu não consigo falar sobre a minha pesquisa para qualquer pessoa? Né? 
Eu espero que vocês tenham entendido Não, algumas coisas que eu tenha falado. Que eu tenha saído dos jargões da ciência. Muito bem, Rádio Comunitária Florestar é viver no apoio cultural aí de Rádio Santana de Óbidos, Rádio Comunitária Integração FM e Rádio Mojuí, acompanhando a nossa programação neste exato momento. A etnomídia Tupinambá, os guerreiros e as guerreiras Tupinambá estão ligando aí, deixando o seu recado e a sua mensagem. Caruana manda um alô, também vai tocar uma musiquinha daqui a pouco. Caruanas é o banda musical de mulheres indígenas, também lá em, em Alter do Chão, na aldeia Alter do Chão, território Borari. Também temos as Suraras do Tapajós, o um grupo de carimbó de mulheres, música que lembra da Amazônia, que fala dos rios da floresta. E Botson Natalina. É isso aí, Rádio Florestar é viver. Ela, ela traz mais é, força na nossa resistência de povos, de, de luta na, na política, no bem viver, na, na preservação do meio ambiente. So what we saw now um was just a little bit of um, what you can see in the final channel of the installation, um, which is the actual transformation of the tower um, into this um, temporary community radio. Uh, so we have um, Natalina and Tupi interviewing uh, many of the scientists they met um, at IMPA, but also at the Adolfo Duque Reserve. And you also have uh, some talks um, as for example, this one um, with the Caruanas group, which is um, a group that uh, Tupi is part of um, as a musician. So she's also playing the Carimbó, which is a traditional um, rhythm in, in the Amazon area. And uh, so you, you have like two groups that are very important uh, for the, the soundtrack of the project. The, the one uh, is uh, Suraras do Tapajós um, and the Caruanas. So the Suraras do Tapajós um, is actually the first Carimbó group um, formed only by women. And uh, the Caruanas is um, also, it's, it's also a group of Carimbó that uh, Tupi plays uh, in. And so they, uh, we, we use a lot of the lyrics because they are very politically engaged. They inform a lot also about the struggles and um, uh, but in a, in, a, in a way that it's communicating to to the communities um, and they're using their own um, cultural um, rhythms uh, proper from the Amazon and and we also see the this uh, very short um, part uh, of the interview that Natalina and Tupi did with uh, Flavia and where she explains uh, the role of the, the, the Atta Tower. Yeah, and I think it's, it's just such a marvelous scene to sum up or to kind of, yeah, end or finalize our conversation as the statement by Flavia is just so important or the stake she makes that really it's super necessary to not isolate um, science, but to communicate science in a uh, understandable way into the society so that the society is informed and can react and act. I think this is a super important stake in the end and what she also stands for or what she tries, she's such an, a wonderful character 
And I like also the, the very last scenes we have seen because this is really a very vital and a, a positive stake in the end. And the exhibition is also not a dystopian one. That's not what we are trying to communicate or to say. We, we really would like to encourage everybody and a call for action and for change. And I think um, in what a lively mode and, and what different possibilities are there to, uh, yeah, to relate to the world we are living in. Um, we've seen today, and uh, I will just quickly check if we have a last question or questions from the audience, but it seems that everybody is um, satisfied right now. Maybe to come to finalize, to come briefly back to the very first question, can we, uh, what can we do to support the project? Is there, I don't know, do you have plans to um, keep on working on the project? Are there possibilities to kind of support maybe as a very last question? Yes, um, so by, um, I also remember during the, 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 the technical <laughs> problem uh, we had, uh, you, would, you also did another question that I heard just the, the end of it. I think it's uh, about um, the context that I'm showing my work and if it it's only on the um, contemporary art museums. Yeah. So it's very important um, for me also, of course, uh, to show the, the work back to the communities and and their, their opinion is uh, crucial. Uh, it's actually the, the first people uh, who I'm, I'm showing the material to. And, and um, what we are doing that right now, I'm trying to transform the material because we shot a lot of hours. So we have 140 hours of material from the whole journey to the tower. And um, what I'm working on right now is to tra transform this material into a documentary film. Um, the commentary will be slightly different um, because it will be more focused on Tupi and Natalina and uh, yeah, the extractivist reserve um, and the role of the, the community radio. So it's not so much about the scientific aspect of the project as the exhibition, but it's a very rich mater material and uh, we feel like the um, can be other forms. Uh, and I think, uh, I believe that cinema is also a very powerful um, uh, language to communicate to a broader um, audience as well. So uh, actually my background is in uh, cinema and I feel with this project, I kind of go back to, to thinking about doing cinema. And about, yes, what you just said right now, I feel like uh, I also have to say we're um, living a very, very hard moment in Brazil, especially with the pandemia. Um, I mean, the coronavirus pandemic only makes it more clear this uh, social inequalities and um, and all this uh, the access uh, that it's not um, um, allowing communities. To, uh, I mean, the the problem with the access to health uh, is very clear right now. For instance, uh, many. Um, uh, of the communities that we visited uh, struggling to, to have um, um, their uh, territories protected from, from uh, the virus or to get, um, to, to, to get uh, access to, to health um, right now. And also it's political, as we all know, um, yeah, it's very hard moment uh, of the political moment in Brazil for environmental um, activists and for the, the, the protection of environmental um, laws that uh, were a, a very long um, work of conquest, uh, work of the um, grassroots movements, indigenous people movements. And all this is, uh, yeah, it's important to say that it's threatened right, right now by this government. But um, what I feel from the project, and um, we, we, we had a lot of, we gained a lot of energy by doing the project and visiting um, Village Boing and, uh, and Aldeia San Francisco and Obidush, all the communities we went and, and the Ata Tower, we gained a lot of energy from it because we saw that um, 
on the opposite of many people think, uh, there are a lot of people working on the territory and struggling every day. And that's um, it's something that uh, it's very visible in the project. And um, I think it's important for the whole world to know that uh, there are, um, especially the, the role of women, it's very impress uh, impressive. And I, I hope the project, yeah, gave a lot of energy and also produced some desire of change into the audience that is um, observing it. Yeah, no, I'm really sure about that. It's, it's really wonderful work and the whole project is really admirable. Thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for all the very interesting insights and we touched a lot of important points um, in this discussion. And yeah, thank you also uh, to all of you out there for sharing your thoughts and questions. It was very interesting where the conversation was leading us. And yeah, to uh, end the session, last but not least, I want to thank the entire team behind this evening. And um, first of all, uh, to Moritz from the video studio for hosting this session and managing all the little trouble we had in between. Mm -hmm. Barbara and Jessica for the organization, the press and marketing team for the advertising, and of course to Ada, who took care of channeling the Telegram questions to me. Our next session will, uh, from the Terrestrial University will be on November 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on the topic of land use and its impact on climate change. And we will welcome an artist from the exhibition, Stefan Veli Botero, and uh, the climatologist, Julia Pongratz. So I've said it all. Now I wish you all a wonderful evening, day or morning, wherever you are. And it is really most amazing that we have so many people interesting in our exhibition and the program and that you all keep the discussions, thoughts and actions alive. Thank you and yeah, see you next time.